is a video training module on the Working with Buyers Narrative by BusinessTraining.com. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about Working with Buyers Narrative. To be successful as a business broker, you must understand working with buyers. It goes without saying that you must have a buyer to sell a business. What we will discuss in this video will help you learn about small business buyers and how to work with them. The first question to answer is, who are your buyers? The answers may surprise you. While there are as many different kinds of buyers as there are different kinds of people, the majority of small business buyers share common traits. Most buyers are looking for income to replace a salary. This has always been true and in the current economy it is even more so. Some buyers are looking for an investment that will provide additional income. It is important for you to know that most small businesses are dependent on the owner for day-to-day -day operations. There are very few small businesses doing under one million in sales that will allow an absentee owner to hire a manager to run the business and still provide a good return on the investment. Most buyers today are fairly well educated. They have a degree and have worked in a management capacity with a large company for several years. They may think they know much, uh, much more about business than you do. They are used to delegating and having support staffs. This means that they probably already have an accountant, attorney, and maybe a, bank, a banker as advisors. You must find out this information because none of these advisors will advise the buyer to buy a business. They will be involved in the process, so you must work to minimize their negative impact. The number one reason the buyer is there is that they want to be their own boss. They are tired of working for someone else and making them money. They want more control over their destiny. Very few buyers are true entrepreneurs. They don't have the great idea. They want to minimize risk by buying a business that, is already, has, that already has a successful track record. Most buyers fall into what Ed Pendarvis calls the 90% rule of buyers. The percentage may not be exactly correct, but most buyers do. Most are first-time buyers. They have never owned their own business before. They may be 50 years old and a vice president of whatever company, but they have never actually owned their own business. Most will have to have financing to buy a business. Even in today's economy, buyers want to leverage what they have to buy the, best, the, the biggest business possible. Very few businesses are sold for cash. Most are not sure what type of business they want to buy. They will need your help to guide them into what fits their skills and interests. Buyers that tell you they will buy any business that is making X dollars are lying whether they know it or not. If a business does not fit into their perceived vision of business ownership, it does not matter how much money it takes. It makes. Most business buyers are scared to death about buying a business. They are looking at putting a large portion of their liquid assets into something that has a large amount of risk. You should also know that if there is a spouse involved, they will not buy a business unless that person is completely on board. Most buyers will need the seller to finance part of the sale of the business. This has always been true for a lot of reasons, but it is even more important now. No matter what you have heard or the seller or, and or buyer may think, getting a business acquisition loan is very difficult. Banks will want a large amount of collateral and will attach a large, ri large risk factor to interest rates on any loan they make. Most buyers will not buy the first business that they inquire about. Most have been looking for quite some time and they like the anonymity of searching on the internet. When they, c when they call, they are serious buyers, but you will have to help them find what they, c what they like can afford and have the skills and ability to run. Most buyers have between fifteen and sixty thousand dollars to put down on a business. 
This is the amount of money they can invest out of liquid funds without touching ret uh, retirement funds, home equity, or other items like these. Beware the buyer who has investors or an open budget. You can waste a lot of time with buyers who aren't honest with you about what they have to invest. Most buyers are comfortable with 10% down. We are used to buying most anything with this level of investment. If a business will pay for itself and allow the owner to make, to make what to them is an adequate salary, it is a good deal from their perspective. Getting back to who are your buyers. Most are out of mid le mid middle level management between 35 and 55 years old and are used to making 45 to $95,000 a year. They are looking to replicate this salary in their own business with the potential to grow it. Let's spend some time now looking at the steps in a normal sale process Concentrating on, concentrating on them from the perspective of working with the buyer. While there can always be exceptions, following the steps in the correct order has proved during my career in business brokerage to be the most successful way to get to closing. These steps are Your initial contact with the buyer Getting a signed confidentiality agreement and non-disclosure agreement Collect, uh, collecting buyer information, determining what business what businesses fit the buyer's profile, disclosing a couple of good fits for the buyer, setting up a confidential uh, confidential showing of the business, having a meeting with the buyer and seller, providing condensed financial information to the buyer. Helping the buyer to submit an offer to purchase. Handling the negotiations of the offer until it is accepted. Managing the due diligence process. Gaining disclosure signed by the buyer and the seller. Managing the closing process. And finally, closing the transaction. Now let's look at the steps in more detail. The first steps involve how to interact with the buyer to maximize the chances of creating a winning situation for everyone involved. Your first contact will be when the buyer inquires about a specific business for sale or buying a business in general. It may be by email, phone, or in person. Today is not likely to be by snail mail. Also, today people expect to be able to find out all the details to most, by most anything after sending an email. The first rule to remember is that people don't buy businesses without meeting in person with the broker and owner. Your initial objective is to get to that, person, uh, to get to that personal face-to-face -face meeting. Explain early in the process about the confidentiality of a business sale and don't give out inf any information that allows a buyer to identify a specific business. You will get inquiries from the curious as well as direct competitors trying to find out who is selling. Now is where your people skills come into play. You should try to build rapport with the buyer in a genuine way. Where are they contacting you from? How long have they been looking for a business? Next, briefly explain the process of looking into a business to buy. If you have a leg legitimate buyer, they won't mind signing a confidentiality and non-disclosure agreement and, find, and filling out a buyer profile. Some businesses and their sellers will also need the buyer to show some proof of financial capability. Because of the concern on the buyer's part for privacy, this may be deferred until later in the process. But be sure to get the signed CNDA. Now, through meetings in person or on the phone, you have to flesh out your buyer prospect. What is their background? If money were not important, what kind of business would be their first choice? Ask plenty of open-ended questions and take notes. The more you understand them, the better you can help them to find the right business. 
Based on your now considerable knowledge of the buyer, pick one, of two, one or two businesses to present. These businesses should be presented to the buyer in a confidential, uh, in the confidential business profile and, re and recorded as shown on the CNDA or attachment. This process may take a while and have to be repeated until one that is a good fit. Try to limit the number of businesses being considered at any one time. Don't make the mistake of sending your list to the buyer. Such buyers will, ne will not ever buy anything. I still have some that check in after 15 years because they saw something new on the website. The best buyers don't have the most money. They have a genuine need, a genuine need to find a way to replace an income and will be actively involved in running the business. Investors are better off with other types of investments unless the business is large enough to support a manager and still provide a good return on investment. Once you have a business that is, good, that is a good fit for the buyer, we move on to the next phase. For the introduction of the buyer and seller through, an, through to an acceptable offer to purchase is the next part of the process. You have used your technical skills to correctly price the business. You thoroughly understand the needs of your seller and the relative strengths and weaknesses of the business. You know enough about the buyer to know what is important to them. Wait a minute. You don't know these things. Then it is not likely that you will sell this business to the buyer. Okay. Assuming you have all the above points covered, it is time to introduce the buyer and seller. The best way to do this is after hours at the business with the three of you present. If that is not possible for some reason, the buyer-seller meeting can be held, any w uh, held away from the business with a later trip to look at it in detail. You are managing the process, but it is not your job to sell the business. Listen much more than you talk. Ask questions of the buyer or seller to clarify points of concern or interest. If the meeting has been success, uh, successful and the seller and buyer have a good feel for each other, present the condensed financials to the buyer to review on their own time. Tell them to contact you if they have any questions. You will note here that we show the business before showing the financials. If the buyer doesn't like the, look, uh, like the business and the seller, it does not matter what the financials look like. If the buyer, after getting clarification and questions answered from you about the business, wants to move forward, you, you help them to prepare an offer. In this step, you show the buyer how to put their offer on paper with contingencies to protect them. This is important because they are taking a big step and need to feel comfortable. Now you present the offer to the seller and explain it in detail. It is unlikely that it will be acceptable as written, so help the seller to counter the changes. This process may continue back and forth until the buyer and seller have reached agreement. Work for the common ground to find a win-win situation for both parties. Now we are at contract, congratulations. The real work begins. Many deals get to this stage only to fall apart. Let's try to keep that from happening. These final steps are where you manage due diligence and closing. During due diligence, the buyer will request all the information they need to make a final decision. This information gathering will be extensive and the buyer will be getting advice from others. You are the conduit, you are the conduit for information requested and needed. At this point, detailed financial information is presented and further explanation for unusual events that affect the financials will be needed. If seller financing has been pursued correctly from the beginning of the listing process, financing is not a major issue. If outside financing is required, be prepared to jump through whatever hoops the lender has for the loan. When using SBA financing, you will find out two months into the process that they need more information often including updated financials from the business. 
Let's hope the seller has continued has continued to tend to the business and is not already retired in their mind. Also at this stage, you will work with both parties to satisfy contingencies. Remember that what may, may seem to be in small detail can crash the entire de deal. This is often the point that a buyer may be ready to give up on the deal. Great skill is required on the part of the business broker to keep the deal on track. The next step is to work with the closing attorney to draft the documents for the deal. I recommend using an attorney to represent the deal, not either party. He or she will draft the agreement with normal representations and warranties fairly representing the deal that has been agreed to. Both parties can have another attorney review the agreement. This is quicker and cheaper than having one side draft the agreement and the other engage an attorney to represent them. You, the buyer and the seller, need to meet with the attorney well, bef meet with the attorney well before the closing. During the process of drafting agreements, you want to make sure that the seller has made full, disclo full disclosure about possible problems and liabilities. Both the buyer and the seller should sign this. Also, you need to have indemn indemnifications that clearly, clearly relieve you of any liability for problems that may arise after closing. The closing attorney can help you draft this. Set the closing for a time that is convenient for all parties. Keep in mind that it is better to close at the end of a key point of time. Some of these points are payroll period, month, tax period, etc. The best cutoff will minimize the prorations and business disruptions. Make sure that all parties will be at closing. Know what the closing statement will look like and, make cer and have certified funds for any payments due. If everything has been done correctly, the closing itself will be smooth and uneventful. The buyer has a new business, the seller has sold one, and you have been paid. Congratulations to all. Let's summarize working with buyers. There are two aspects that you as a business broker must know, the technical aspects and the interpersonal aspects. The technical aspects show your grasp of the methodology of pricing formatting and presenting the business profile, explaining and managing the steps in the process, and dealing with other professionals involved. These aspects will demonstrate that you are a professional business broker. But the interpersonal aspects are actually far more important and overlap into how the technical aspects are, are presented and perceived. These aspects of dealing with people will determine whether or not you are a successful business broker.